Thank you. I hope that the organizers will add a clap uh, before this talk. So, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for showing up. This will be a little bit of a different talk today than the, the previous ones. It's not about the code, it's not about development, it's uh, more about the process of how we did this project in Croatia that uh, I'm really proud of. Um, but before I begin, a couple of things about me. So, <clears throat> this is my son. We like to fool around, as you can see. This is me wearing the... Uh, well, I, I'm not sure how it's called in English. So, we, we, we fool around a lot. We don't live together, so it's really important for me to be there for him. And he is my true motivation. And I want to create a better world for him. Uh, I'm a designer. I have 14 years, around 40 years of experience. And for the past 10 years, I've been working with WordPress. I do make a living out of WordPress, but I'm also specialized in designing touchscreen user interfaces. I run an agency called Blagonich Brothers. Uh, although we don't look alike, we are brothers, believe it or not. Uh, we don't hate each other, we love each other, but on this picture, just to be dramatic, we uh, figure that we uh, will try something like hitting each other, and I won. Um, I'm also a WordPresser. I am really fan of communities and I like to think of myself as an activist. So on this uh, first picture on the left, there is a, a, an association from Pula, that's my hometown, uh, that just a week ago celebrated their 10th anniversary of working with people with disabilities. And this first website that we did for them 10 years ago was on WordPress. So WordPress really helped them promote their community programs. I also co-organized WordPress Meetup in Zagreb, uh, just so this is the picture from our last meetup uh, two weeks ago. It was the 11th meetup. We usually uh, get somewhere around 50 to 80, 90, 90 people. So much more than today. But thanks again for showing up, showing your support. And we, we plan to have work in Croatia in Splint this year. I was the lead organizer past year in Rijeka. And this is also part of this story. So a couple of things about Croatia. Have you been to Croatia before? No? you should definitely come, okay? See you, see you at work in Croatia. It's uh, first week of September, so see you there. Um, it's a beautiful country. These three pictures I took uh, in the span of three, three days. First, I was hiking on a mountain near Zagreb. Then I was driving on a bus, and this is a view of island stress. And last one, this is from my hometown, um, Pula. We have a beautiful Roman amphitheater, uh, 2,000 years old there. But Croatia also has problems. There are a lot of differences between Croatia and Germany. So, for example, Germany has 20 times more people, and your budget is 70 times more bigger than Croatia. You know, it's a huge amount of money that you have that we don't. And you have two times uh, higher GDP per capita, so per people, than we have. And because of all that, we have a lot of differences of working with clients. Our clients are less educated. We get lower budgets. And nevertheless, clients expect the same quality that we deliver when we deliver a website. So I would say and argue that we can get the same opportunities like you probably uh, can in Germany. That's not a problem, but there are a lot of differences because of that. We want to go to conferences outside, we want to travel, but it's a lot more expensive than when you are living, uh, living here in Germany. And we try to be as professional as we can be, but these are problems and these are differences that you should take into consideration when thinking about what I will show you in this presentation. Uh, so, I say that we as professionals in Croatia have to be innovative and resourceful. We have to change our process, we have to adapt to these circumstances. So, I'm going to give you one example. In our agency, uh, we usually don't deliver uh, all website templates in Photoshop. So, we do basically 
one to two templates in Photoshop and after that we go to HTML and build our templates there. So we changed our process and that's not nearly all because we don't design uh, responsive websites in Photoshop. We don't design mobile version, tablet version. So we changed our process and in this and at this time when we go to HTML we usually design breakpoints, we usually design mobile first uh, approach there. And I could go on and on saying that uh, we don't share wireframes with our clients because they're not willing to pay for those, but nevertheless we try to create those that are maybe lower fidelity than you should uh, probably do in your own process. So, can you tell from what I'm talking about what is Croatia, Croatia's biggest problems? They ask people of, of Croatia what are four biggest problems there. And the number one thing was unemployment, then economy, poverty and corruption. So around 20% of people are unemployed, and that's a lot. Economy has been in recession for eight years now, so that's also a problem. And people are leaving country because salaries are so low, they are basically struggling and try to make a living every day. So this week, around 1,000 people left Croatia for good. They don't plan to return to Croatia anytime soon. And just the past year, around 50,000 people left Croatia. And, of course, we have a problem with corruption as well. But these first three problems is something that we cannot solve as individuals. As individuals, we cannot solve unemployment, we cannot solve the economy or the poverty rate. Because we don't like to protest, we don't see ourselves as sort of a protest nation. We like to protest if it's something that we could like on Facebook, so we have a lot of Facebook protesters, but we almost never protest on streets. And in Croatia, we have a problem with corruption and lack of transparency, and this is something we can try to solve as individuals. But that's not nearly all. There's not a problem only with corruption. Most of our politicians do try to solve that, but they just don't manage that. We have a problem with vision and how to solve the corruption issue. So we asked ourselves, can we help them, can we help politicians solve that problems? Corruption issues come when you lack transparency. When you don't work on your government transparency. Some work have been done in the past, but that is not nearly enough. So this is my favorite quote from uh, Dalai Lama, which says, a lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. And it's definitely true. So I ask you, why is transparency important? First of all, we want to know how is our money spent. We want to ask questions and get answers from our government. And we want to be involved in the decision-making process as well. So on top of that, of all that, we want to build a better democracy. So this is something that is pretty normal here in Germany. You have a long, long time democracy, but Croatia was not even on the map 25 years ago. So we are quite a young democracy. And having a two-way communication helps understand the problems of running a city and running a country, and it builds trust between the government and the citizens. And only like this you can build a better society at the end. So in 2014, GONG, that is association, uh, non-governmental uh, association that uh, helps oversee the election process. And it was really important in, in the 90s because we are such a young democracy, we were, we were at war back then. So we had to oversee this election process. And in 2014, they, uh, uh, they, they started a survey, and it's not the first one. So the first one was uh, done in 2009, then in 2011. So in 2014, it was the third uh, survey they did, and the main objectives is to see how cities and counties in Croatia help build transparency and trust between the citizens and the local governments. And the average score is 5.9. So when you see that, you, you might think that it's a good score, but on a scale uh, from 0 to 10, that's 
somewhere in the middle. I don't see it as a good score. And 98% of local governments had their websites, but they are usually uh, lacking the information required to have on the website. So you have a situation that a local government, a city, has a website without any information that are obliged for, for they're obligated for some reason by the law. And on top of all that, that's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is that there are, there are no penalties for doing that. So they are basically not delivering information that are needed by the law, but there are no penalties. So one of the Croatian problems. And we started to think about working with Rijeka because Rijeka is the most transparent city in Croatia and it was in each survey. So the last uh, year that the survey was uh, conducted, Rijeka got a 9.6 uh, score, which is really amazing. So we said, let's try to change things with Rijeka. So this is Rijeka. I don't know if you know uh, where Rijeka is. Rijeka is the largest Croatian port. It's uh, close to Istra, close to Italy, so it's around 50 kilometers from Slovenia, from Italy. It's uh, on the, uh, where uh, the, the couple of paths intersect. So if you, are, if you were going to Croatia, then you, you could know that. And Rijeka is also the third largest city there. Uh, there are four major cities, Zagreb, Split, Rijeka and Osijek. Rijeka is the third largest city, it has a population of around 130,000 people, but nevertheless it's uh, four times smaller than Nuremberg. And Rijeka is a multicultural city. There are a lot of nationalities living there, side by side, without problems, without issues. Uh, and it's really a multicultural city that we all uh, from Croatia could learn about how to, how to live in peace and harmony. And because of all that, it's open for new ideas. And as I said before, Rijeka is the most transparent city. And on top of all that, I think that you won't be surprised when I tell you that just two weeks ago, Rijeka uh, received an award and it was selected as European Capital of Culture for, 20, uh, for 2020. So I think that they're doing such an amazing and important work. So why Rijeka wanted WordPress? They used it before on a couple of smaller projects. They know how to use it. That's the, the, the main reason. So WordPress is easy to use, is easy to install, easy to run. So people know how to use it. They know the administration interface. They know how to change things themselves. And this is what is really important to them. The second thing is that WordPress is open source. And they believed, and I truly believe in that, that it's in the best public interest. So in Croatia, we have a lot of problems with proprietary CMSs and a lot of not really transparent decision making when creating a website for cities and governments and so on. So it's definitely in best public interest to have an open source platform that won't be dependable on anyone. Uh, nevertheless, that's us or someone, someone else or some other agency. And in 2003, WordPress revolutionized publishing everything could uh, get in line and publish anything they wanted. And I think that it truly helped, not only in cities with democracies that are sti still uh, struggling, but it helped a lot of different people to publish their thoughts, ideas. So this is one of the reasons why WordPress is now used on quarter of the web. And this was truly amazing, and this happens even today. And 10 years later, Rijeka wanted WordPress to help it being more transparent. So I would say that in this case and many other cases, WordPress helps transparency as well. And at that moment, we decided that we didn't want to create a website for only one city, but we rather wanted to create a platform so all the cities could use it. But we had a problem because, as I want to say, we didn't have any political ties. And not only that, but I was very critical about our national government two years ago when they decided to adopt gov.uk as their primary uh, design pattern for the new uh, government website. And they did that, but they did it in a wrong way because they didn't think about the content, they didn't think about the information architecture of the web. So they used it. Of course, gov.uk is open source, so anyone can use it. By, but they should have done a much better job. 
And we shouldn't be satisfied with the average, but we should understand and aim for much more. And they even issued a couple of press releases that were saying basically that my articles that I publish in a couple of uh, magazines are wrong. So where, where is the problem, you might ask? So the national government and the local government Rijeka, it came from the same political party. So with that in mind and knowing that Croatia still struggles with their democratic principles, you might think that because of that we couldn't get the job. But we did uh, get the job nevertheless because Rijeka really wanted to work with us. So our approach was, is that we wanted to make a better city website and we want to open source it. And definitely we want to design it in the open. So we started writing a blog, started to document everything that has been done in this process. And maybe even more important for myself and a lot of community members in Croatia is that we wanted to make it accessible for everyone. So when we started working with Rijeka, we asked, uh, we created a survey for the citizens of Rijeka and other cities as well, and we asked them a lot of questions, one of which was, how much do you think that accessibility matters on the new website? And around 25% of them said it really matters, and 75% of them just didn't answer that question or said that it doesn't bother them. And this is basically the only issue, the accessibility issue, that one thing that we didn't listen to the public, so we just ignored their answer because we believe and we think that accessibility really matters and what makes WordPress great is this accessibility team that are working really hard to make WordPress better for people with disabilities. And Rijeka said, we want that too. So there were a couple of questions uh, like how to even start working with them without public bid. So I'm not sure what's the situation in Germany, but in Croatia, everything about 25, approximately 1,000 euros have to go to a public bid. And I think that this is perfectly natural, but in Croatia we have another problem with that, because there are companies and there are individuals that just use public bid to lower prices and to break this public bid process. And in Croatia, we don't have the ability to say, hey, we want to use the, uh, the company or the agency that has the best economic value to us, but we want to use the lower offer. And people tried to fight on those uh, grounds and they just didn't manage that. The second question that, uh, was, that we were afraid of was the public reaction. So, I, I will say that uh, our final offer for this project was 23, around 23,000 euros and we usually charge much more because we are working with bigger clients, we are working with companies that have specific goals, we are trying to optimize everything we do, so our prices are much higher. And in Croatia, 23,000 euros is a big, a big budget. And people are, were thinking, hey, I, I earned that amount of money in a year, and they are just doing a website, anyone can do it. And we were afraid of the professional community reaction as well, but professional community was really eager, really helpful, and they did an amazing job supporting our effort on all that. And our last thing that we were worried about, uh, worried about is if this is enough of a budget that we could work on, so we could make this project happen in the end. And at that point we just said this is maybe one in a lifetime opportunity and we want to invest our time and we want to create something that is extraordinary. And when we answered those questions, we started thinking of a process. And this is our process for when we started working with Rijeka. So, four phases. Analysis, design, HTML and WordPress. And we try to adopt a principle of what we call agile design. So you all know about agile development. We wanted something else that we call agile design. And it means that we will always communicate and innovate even in later stages of the project. And we want to talk with citizens and cities to solve their real problems. And above all that, 
We want to make everything open for change anytime. So we started with the analysis process. We planned for analysis to last for a week. I practically moved to Rijeka uh, and I lived there two months so I could work on site with the local team from, from the city. We analyzed hundreds of pages of content. So I will go back a bit when, if you remember that transparency survey. Rijeka was the most transparent city, but there was still a problem because all the information was that was there on the website, but people don't seem to find that. So the, the thing is that nevertheless Rijeka was the most transparent city, they still had transparent problems because when survey ended, of course, people like investigative journalists could find any answer, but regular people like myself and you couldn't. So we analyzed hundreds of pages of content to build a better information architecture. And we structured that content into different groups. For example, news, information about the city, about the city offices and local government, and what is especially important is topics for the citizens. And this last topic uh, for the citizens was structured into sections like family, culture, sports, education, economy, and so on. Our idea was to help people find their way through their content. So this is what we aim for. And we really focus on this, that key content. So news articles and that sort of information that is here for, I would say, political reasons. So you could see what uh, city officials are doing within a day. were pushed aside to make room for content that interests average citizen. So topics for the citizens were being rewritten from a scratch because they didn't have that content before. And we did a lot of interviews. We interviewed both citizens and other cities. So you can see this is a workshop that we held at Croatian Association of Cities, where we asked other cities to help them uh, help us solve their problems. And special attention was pointed to smaller cities. And the smaller cities in Croatia have barely 10,000 people living in it. After that, we created personas. We tested user flow. We wanted to see how it, ever, uh, how it all goes uh, on the website. Uh, one of my favorite personas was a young dad that is trying to subscribe his kid into kindergarten. And we wanted to see how many steps does anyone need to come to the topic that interests him. So we optimized a lot during this process. We simply uh, sketched everything on whiteboards. We did a lot of uh, testing user flows. And with that, we come to a solution that were uh, that is currently undergoing the final phase of implementation to WordPress. And we also built some wireframes um, and tested even more. Because we made changing, changes during this process. So remember, we started by analyzing content, we created information architecture, we did interviews with citizens, we did interviews with cities, and with all that we changed the content and we changed how things are going and how the things are looking on the website. And we wanted to see if we can optimize these small parts of the website as well. And these wireframes were shown to the citizens that came to a workshop uh, and we showed them that in small groups. We explained the user flow, we explained how will they get the information they needed. They, we asked them a lot about what are their problems, uh, what do they think lacks on the current website. So this current website is um, quite old. I think it's eight years old and I will show it in a moment. So we got some insight that helped us build better templates based on this interaction we had with the citizens. So in our second phase, the design phase, we were focused on key templates only. We didn't design those templates in mobile and tablet version. We designed only in desktop version. So remember when I said that we wanted to optimize everything, we have this budget that we had to work on and working more times meant that we wouldn't get paid for that. Um, we were open to making changes uh, at this uh, time as well, if we believe that it will help our users. 
so we were open uh, to make any changes uh, necessary to build a better experience for them. And I promised you a current website of the City of Rijeka website, so uh, please, I, I won't say close your eyes, but here it is. So this is the current website for the City of Rijeka. It's, I think, eight years old. And as you can see, a lot of content is overflown. So we have basically an information overload. Uh, we have two navigations up here and uh, on the left. We have news that is, that is, that is practically using the whole homepage and we have a lot of banners and this is especially uh, uh, fun with the banners because every department can just come and say, hey, add a banner on the homepage because, yeah, I think that they had around 50 banners on the homepage. So we try to make the change and we try to simplify everything. So this is our proposed design for the homepage. Uh, you can see that there are a lot of less information there. Uh, we used, oh sorry, we used this uh, slider as well. We are not the fa fan of, uh, of the sliders, we don't like it, but I think that on some occasions, like when you want to promote certain content that is really important for the citizens, like what happens when city has a day uh, in a year that's uh, celebrating or when it's a carnival because Rijeka is uh, well known for that carnival you want to show that and the most important thing is this big uh, big uh, navigation pattern on the top so basically this navigation will stick always to the top so you could come to any part of the website within a click or two clicks. And this is something that we, are, we wanted to, to do. We wanted to create information architecture that will support that. And there are only a couple of things on the main menu, like uh, what is uh, going on, the, the addresses in Rijeka, then uh, I don't see it from this. So this is a strategy for the city. The, parts of the city and topics for the citizens and so on. We try to uh, make everything uh, really easy to see and, and watch. And we, had, we added a quick links basically with uh, the ability for, for them alone to change that. So when a parent will come to the city and uh, in Croatia, uh, the subscribing to kindergarten process is only in a month in the entire year, so when parents will come to that, they will get the quick link that will basically guide them to the landing page about uh, subscribing your kids to kindergarten. We added a couple of more things, so uh, the new section has bigger images, but it uh, has no description. We added important news that are important for some ways, for example, if you want to help promote your social policies, if you want to help people to see what are, uh, they're supposed to do and uh, for example when you build a new house for public housing and so on basically this news will stick there and if you remember the banner part on the old website you, you have seen that there is a lot of information overload a lot of colors a lot of different designs so we try to not allow them to upload any banner that they want we created a interface that will add couple of things, couple of elements that are going to be used throughout the website. And on the bottom of everything, it's a sort of sitemap-like navigation with all the important links. So when people are scrolling to the website, when they come to the end of it, they, want, they, they could go uh, to find another content, another page there. So it's really important to, to have that as well. Uh, second... Uh, template. We, we developed around 10 or 15 templates. I'm not sure everything is available on GitHub as well. Uh, the second template was uh, topics for the citizens. So we have, uh, we have uh, parts, of the, parts of the topics like, like education, schools, uh, culture, sports and so on. And it's scrollable, basically it's a landing page for the topics and when you click on some uh, topic then you will get the landing page that is specially optimized to get all the relevant information
for the citizens. So this is an example from the taxes and taxes of the city uh, landing page for these sort of topics. And if you scroll down a bit further, you will see that all the information there is somehow, um, uh, I don't know how to say that properly, but it's uh, optimized for better readability and so the people can, could actually see what's really important for them. In our HTML phase, we said everything should be responsive, of course. We are designing responsive websites for, I think, past six years. But we were not focusing on devices. We didn't design respons responsive uh, breakpoints for devices like iPhone, iPad, Android tablets, and so on. We designed for the resolution. So at some points, we added breakpoints. And if we see that content is not uh, delivering well then on certain resolutions, we add a breakpoint as well. So we could change these small parts of the website. Everything is still open for change if it benefits our users. On the WordPress part of the uh, design process, we use the standard WordPress administration as a starting point. The main reason for that is they know how to use it. They have websites that are running WordPress. Uh, the second thing is that we want to optimize it. So make it easier to use for them, for their users, and to make it error-proof. So we, re we remove elements from the administration what we think that are not necessary to have it in the, in the administration interface. We are using advanced custom fields to create sort of experience that is basically guiding the administration users how to upload content, how to make it more uh, uh, legible and so on. And we interconnected a lot of content with custom post types and tags. So for example, uh, on the past website, if you want to change something like the address or uh, if someone changes it's his or her job position, you had to do it in a really painful way. But we are creating an address book. We are creating a sort of interconnection between the address book, the workplace between the department. And with using tags, we try to make everything as easy as possible. So let's say that there is a news editor that wants to end the news about the session of the... Uh, city Council, it simply adds a news with a tag and it shows up on the City Council page as well. So this is really important if you want to have a transparent government. And we were focused on transparency information as well. So budget, representative, contacts and so on. And in the, in the example of representatives, we are adding a functionality so we could see how is the representative re reacting to different questions. So representatives could ask questions, uh, the mayor could ask questions for the departments and we are showing the citizens what is uh, his personality because citizens now can see what are these questions and what sort of, uh, what, what sort of uh, commitment the representative has and this uh, finally uh, uh, works really good when you try to re-elect uh, those representatives. We faced quite a few problems. So the first one was we got paid uh, less than we usually had for similar projects. Uh, this is uh, around two and five uh, times or even three times less than for, for similar projects. And we had a lot of unexpected setbacks. For example, we planned for analysis uh, phase to last a week. We worked on that almost three weeks, so you can see that we didn't get paid for, for two weeks of work. Uh, it was a lot more work than expected. Uh, we uh, created blog posts. In that process, we s realized that we could add some extra benefit, like creating content strategy guidelines and accessibility guidelines. And these strategic documents is something that is uh, really important because there were no uh, that sort of documents uh, in Croatia before that. And what are the benefits? Except that we added value with these uh, documents like content strategy, accessibility guidelines and uh, uh, designing, uh, design blog. Uh, WordPress is now more recognized than it was ever before. 
people see that they can build something extraordinary and amazing with WordPress. And we talked in this uh, work camp, I talked with a couple of people, and if you come from a less developed country, then you have problems understanding that WordPress is not only a blogging platform. And since everything will be open sourced, this is a substantial benefit for the country. Citizens were involved and what is more important, they were listened. We really asked them questions and we were prepared to listen, to listen, them, uh, to, listen to their answers and to make changes accordingly. And one of the benefits was this. This is a, an educational conference that we held in the city hall of Rijeka, which aimed the employees of, uh, of the city. We just asked, we, we, we saw the opportunity to create a one-day, half-day conference. So we asked uh, professionals from the copywriting industry, SEO industry, social media industry, and we even asked uh, a guy that comes from the Association of Blind People of Croatia. So they explained what are the important things that you have to do when creating content for the web. So copywriting guy uh, talked about it, uh, SEO guys talked about it, and so on and so on. And it was really important to do that because employees of uh, the city now uh, has a better understanding of all that. And uh, above all that, we filmed, we videoed everything, and it's uh, available online for the other cities as well. And one of the benefits is uh, this. We organized work in Croatia, our first work in Croatia last year in Rijeka. Uh, we have four meetups in four different cities, and uh, Rijeka meetup was only one of them, but the city of Rijeka was really eager to help the WordPress community. So they were involved with how we managed to organize everything. They gave us the venue for free, they gave us a lot of support, they gave us access to local media. So we organized a really cool work camp for around 170 uh, people that were really happy after, after all that. So let's try to conclude this. Uh, we all have our own comfort zones. Politicians have their comfort zones as well, but I think that they should leave their comfort zones if they want to make a better future. So when we elect them, I think we elect them for, for this reason. We want to, for them to give us a better future. And a couple of people asked me, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this the way we are doing it? So I say that we should seize the opportunity, we should lead if we can, and we shouldn't expect someone else to lead. And this is sort of a project, if you remember uh, from before, that is maybe once in a lifetime. I, I don't know, but this is an opportunity that I didn't want to miss, and we as a team didn't want to miss that. Because uh, when you think of yourself as a designer, designers, you think of changing the world so the world can be a better place. And one day, I just want to sit in front of the mirror and I want to see myself that I did everything I could so I could look my son in the eye and just uh, tell him that his dad did everything to build him a better future. So, thank you. And I know that we are, this is the last session and we want to uh, go away. We got enough Okay, time. I will speak slowly. So, uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, first of all. Um, just got a tiny little present, um, an almost full array thanks. of chocolate. Thanks. 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 Um, are there any questions right now? So uh, the question was, I think I should repeat it for the camera. So the question was how we were chosen to do that. So there is a history lesson. I started working with WordPress 10 years ago. I was really recognized in the community that wasn't a community until three years ago. And uh, we started talking with Rijeka, I think two, three, four years. I don't remember anymore. And the problem was uh, what I said about public bid situation. So, 
uh, we didn't uh, want to do anything that is not transparent. And we said that if it uh, has to go to public bid, then we will definitely apply. But they have to find a way to choose whoever they want. So if they want to go with the uh, lowest economic, lowest, uh, lowest price, it's okay with us. We, do, we didn't want to work that way. And since this offer was uh, above, uh, so uh, below public bid threshold, we couldn't, uh, we could say that the mayor could decide for themselves and sign these documents. So the mayor said, we want to work with these guys because it's really important to do so for this reason that I mentioned in the, in the um, presentation. So we did everything open source. At that point, we sat with them and we said, hey, if we, we want to do this right, we want everything open source. We want to design, to design in the open. We want to uh, document everything. And because of all that, we added this extra value and it wasn't that big of a deal because we didn't get what we usually get paid because we seize this opportunity. So, so basically No, there was no public bid because it was the below public bid threshold. So our, uh, the question was, what are the plans for the future of the project? Uh, since uh, this young fellow has the same problems in Slovakia as well. Just kidding. So uh, the plans is uh, that we will open source everything. So we open source design already. We are in the last phase of doing the HTML part and WordPress part, and we are combining that, that two together so we could lower actually the cost of everything. Uh, and we will... Uh, open source the HTML templates, the uh, WordPress team, and this will uh, all go in English language, so it could be adopted basically anywhere with a similar, uh, similar system. So we are aiming not only to cover Croatian cities, we are aiming the, to cover the cities in other countries as well. Because uh, today, when you are building a city for, uh, a website for a city, then this is a substantial cost. And so we in Croatia alone have around 130 cities and I think that uh, half of them uh, don't have the budget to create something like that and with that we would give them everything for free and in that way maybe a local WordPress agency and we don't want to work on that anymore uh, the local WordPress agency can come, can create a design and use the WordPress team so they can build a better website for their city as well so this is the benefits and I think that it could be used in Slovakia as well. I, I was uh, last week on work in London and I talked with a lady from Bulgaria with the same problems. So I suppose that this could uh, make uh, better democratic principles in other countries as well. Thank you. Okay, thanks again. Um, Thank before you. Before you all leave, um, I have a small uh, service announcement for those of you who